Okay, we're going to try to do this. If I sound like a old-time operator, nasally and everything, I apologize. Um, just getting over from being sick and everything. So, uh, appreciate your prayers. And, um, yeah, let's go. Completing the Word of God. Colossians 1.25 of which church I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Amen. Some translations, including the recovery version, say to complete the word of God. <clears throat> this makes more sense to me. Paul's ministry is unique because his is the continuation of the speaking of Christ after Christ rose from the dead, was seated in the heavens, and accomplished his work. Amen. He now needed to give more revelation and clarity concerning his work on the cross and his role in resurrection as our high priest and as the head of the body, which is the church. Amen. The main thing that Paul is focused on is all the riches of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Paul has a gospel. We think of the gospels as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels that show us Jesus in the flesh, gave us all his works in his human life on earth, what he died, or excuse me, what he did on earth and what he said, and then tell us about his death and resurrection. Paul's gospel which is the book of Romans, starts with Christ after his descent to heaven and has already uh, pro, uh, propitiated our sins by placing his blood on the mercy seat. Romans 3.25. Amen. Paul's gospel picks up after Christ had accomplished redemption for us and made peace with God for us. And now, as the Spirit is being dispensed into us to make us one with Him. Amen. Paul's Gospel describes all of the things related to our identification with Christ in His death, resurrection, and ascension, so that we are crucified with Him. Galatians 2.20. Amen. We are raised together with Him, and we are seated with Him in the heavenlies. He describes our position before God in the heavens and Christ's indwelling of us and how that is carried out in his own autobiographical <laughs> um, experience, such as in 2 Corinthians and Philippians, which gives us an insight into how the crucified Christ looks on display in his members and all of the quote-unquote science of how it works. This is Paul's gospel. It is a continuation of the speaking of Christ and is the completion of the word of God concerning the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Some people get upset because we emphasize Paul because we are distinguishing Paul, or excuse me, we are distinguishing between Paul and Jesus. And they say making Paul greater than Jesus. But we recognize that Paul's ministry is the continuation of Christ speaking. Amen. However, he is speaking as the heavenly glorified Christ after his resurrection. And that's what he and that's what we focus on because that is the present truth. Second Peter 1 12, of course, we look at the gospels, but we realize that the whole situation changed with the death and resurrection of Christ. And there was a mystery that was hidden from the ages past, hidden from the angels, hidden from sons of the sons of men, and revealed to Paul for our glory. Amen. His ministry is a stewardship to describe and dispense the riches of the glory of this mystery of Christ in you, into the saints, to be our food, our clothing, are everything so that we can be equipped amen john and peter also ministered the riches of christ according to this revelation the dispensation of god wasn't just paul's revelation it's just that paul was given the task 
of articulating it more clearly and giving us all the doctrine and teachings surrounding it. In that sense, Paul is very special. It was given to him to complete the word of God. He wrote most of the New Testament. There's a reason for that. Amen. Sorry, that was a little rough. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things and, um, yeah, amen. <laughs>